I'm going to bring in um, Dr. Eyal Khulata. He is uh, a former uh, Na Israel National Security Advisor. He served with the government from 2021 to January this year. He's currently a senior fellow at the Foundation for Defense of Democracies based in Washington. Doctor, uh, thank you for being with us on, on the program. Um, could, perhaps you could just talk to us about these operations that we're watching on our screens uh, just south of Starot. What, what do you think the, the Israeli military is trying to do? Because there seems to be repeated bombardment of an area a sort of an area before the built-up area of Gaza City? Well, first, uh, uh, Israel is in, uh, um, um, mounting its, uh, its counter-strike against Hamas. The government made it very clear uh, what our goal is. Our goal is to remove Hamas from uh, ruling Gaza. Gaza uh, Hamas lost every uh, legitimacy to rule the population of, of, of Gaza. They, they chose nine days ago uh, uh, to mount the most deadly terrorist attack Israel had since in existence. In fact, this was the worst day for the Jewish people since the Holocaust. Uh, when they chose to do this, instead of taking care of their own people, uh, they made uh, uh, that strategic choice, which was really unfortunate and totally unnecessary, but this is what they did. So the, the purpose is very clear. Mm. We are preparing for an attack that would end with the removal of Hamas from the ability to rule Gaza. Mm. Now, I, we will I, not, I understand that, but just, moment, just specifically yeah. to these pictures that we're looking at, this area, yeah. what do you know, as a former security advisor, what do you know about this open ground between right. uh, Israel and, and the, the built-up population? So Hamas has uh, built over the years uh, a, a vast network of, of tunnels underground. Uh, they keep everything underground. Uh, uh, they used to have uh, uh, tunnels that would infiltrate into Israel, we took care of that with, with the uh, uh, wall that is underground with, with concrete, but we cannot take care of, of everything. Uh, the military is operating right now in places where there isn't a heavily populated Palestinians because we do not want to target Palestinian citizens. So we're operating where we can, uh, um, and the next stage will mount when the population leaves northern Gaza to the south, where it's safe, where we're providing what is necessary so we can go after the Hamas terrorists in the northern part of Gaza uh, with as little uh, casualties and non-collateral damage as possible. The, one of the things that we, we saw in the, the morning reporting was that the objective will be, although it's yet to be confirmed, the objective will be to occupy Gaza City. Is, is that, do you think that is inevitable? Well, no, sir, if, you're, if you're trying to decapitate... If you're trying to decapitate Hamas, you, you have to be on the ground where they are. So would you imagine that that would be the purpose of the, of, of the incursion? Uh, the government uh, uh, did not say that uh, the purpose is to conquer Gaza and to reoccupy the Gaza Strip. This, this isn't true. Israel has no intention to go back and to occupy Gaza Strip. Israel has an intention to remove Hamas from leadership role of Gaza. There are very many ways to do this. And the best way to do this, by the way, is to have all of the countries in the region understand that the fact that Hamas is ruling Gaza is not in their interest. Frankly, it is not in the interest of the Palestinian people in Gaza. Israel does not have to conquer uh, uh, the entire Gaza Strip. Israel does not want to conquer the entire Gaza Strip. But Israel will operate in very meaningful and decisive ways uh, to eliminate uh, Hamas' ability to govern and to, to, to eliminate as many terrorists and leadership of them as possible. Just a, a quick word on the water being switched on in the south of Gaza today. You, you might have heard our correspondent Lise Doucet speculating that that area will be the refuge for the people in Gaza. Do, do you think the, the intention is to ensure that they can get aid in there and support the people who've left the northern sections of Gaza? So IDF spokesman was very clear when he spoke about, about that. And he said that uh, Israel uh, uh, created those corridors so the civilian population can leave the northern part where Hamas has put his infrastructure, where Israel must strike and move to the south. Uh, humanitarian aid is, is an issue not only for Israel, it is an issue for the other countries. The Egyptians should open the, the crossing and they should use it to allow people to move as they need and to uh, bring in humanitarian uh, 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 supply as needed uh, uh, for that as well. In fact, this should also be the crossing through which Hamas would allow all of the hostages that they can taken from Israel to move out into safe haven. They've created this massive humanitarian disaster. Uh, and it's their hands to do this. I think the IDF is very, very careful in what it's doing. Very careful to be as, as, as you know, as surgical as possible, even though this is a war, right? This is not like a, a one of the campaigns that we had uh, when I was National Security Advisor, we had a three-day campaign against Islamic Jihad. We were very, very surgical. There were very few civilians 
uh, were hurt. We did this intentionally. This is the Israeli policy. So yes, of course, the, the southern part of Gaza should be the place where they can evacuate to, they can have whatever they need so that we can conduct the war uh, uh, campaign where we should move. By the way, mm. we've also evacuated our population. You showed yes. footage of, of Zderot before that. We've evacuated mm. Zderot. This is, this is, I mean, you know, unimaginable for Israeli population uh, uh, um, to evacuate such a town. But we did it because we care about our civilians. We don't want them to be in war zone. We don't want them to be human shields. By the way, we did not get an advance warning before Hamas attacked our communities. We would have evacuated them if we needed to. And this, of course, is only a, just a, a snip of what will happen if the war in the north will start as well. Hezbollah has much more uh, firepower. If Iran does that, if Hezbollah joins that war, uh, the level of damage to our civilian population, uh, and of course to Lebanon, will be a totally different story. Dr. Halata, good to get your thoughts this afternoon. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you.